Hey everybody, welcome back to Reason and Theology. I want to review some comments by Peter Kwasniewski, a Catholic philosopher who says that hyperpapalists have a brain disease, to use his word, um, and they also have a hatred for reason. I want to see what exactly does he think hyperpapalism is, and then see if that maps onto reality. Um, I think that that will be helpful, helpful, but first let me maybe just give you some introductory comments here. Some people are going to um, certainly ask me, well, why don't you just engage Kwasniewski um, directly? I've, I've tried to multiple times. I've invited him on the show probably over five different times, and he's declined each time. Uh, he finally gave me a reason, and he just said, I rub him the wrong way, whatever that means. I guess it just means that I don't take every word of his as gold. I, I don't know. Um, but I rub on the wrong way, so he's not willing to have a discussion. So I've done videos engaging him. I've written papers engaging him, especially from a magisterial perspective, and critiqued his content there. He's chosen not to engage that. He's explicitly said he's not going to respond to me. I think we all know why. Um, <clears throat> so... I did a video, uh, well, probably did it a year and a half ago, but I restreamed it uh, yesterday, or the day before, actually. It was just a few days ago. And the video is called, Can Pope Francis Ban the Latin Mass? More Than Five Quotes. And I think that really set Kwasniewski off, because he started to go um, on Facebook with these long tirades against me, and um, the comment section was especially interesting. <laughs> he has some additional points there uh, uh, that I want to briefly review. Uh, because again, at the end of the day, he effectively thinks that Catholics who want to be faithful to the magisterium and faithful to the Pope are hyperpapalists who have a brain disease and they're incapable of reason. And I think that, like I said, that's worth considering. Now, just to give some more background before we actually look into uh, the Facebook comments, I recall one of the earliest interactions that I had with Kwasniewski, just again, for, for people who may want some background. It wasn't really good. Um, I, he, he was in, in one either article or video or something, he was denying um, the canonizations of popes saying that these are not necessarily valid because they're not all infallible. So, for instance, he would reject the canonization of Paul VI. And <clears throat> I was going over the fact that these are secondary objects of infallibility and papal canonizations are infallible. And I had mentioned something about Lambertini, uh, who is Pope Benedict the Sixteenth prior to him being Pope. Uh, so that's his name prior to him uh, being elevated to the papacy, well-known theologian who wrote on the subject. And I had mentioned him, and I had referenced his book prior to him being elevated to the papacy and referred to him as Lambertini. And he goes on this long tirade on Facebook saying, you know, that this is improper and there should be penalties for people who refer to uh, popes by their, th by this name, you know, prior to their elevation to the papacy. It, it was just something really weird. He, he was nitpicking the way I identified him. Um, in fact, I think I identified him as Pope Benedict the 14th, even though the work he had written uh, was before his elevation to the papacy. And he was just saying, look, this is criminal. You can't refer to him as Pope Benedict the Fourteenth because he wasn't yet a pope. Uh, you have to refer to him as Lambertini. And so he goes on this long, long tirade, just saying, if I were your professor, I would fail you. I'd fail this paper and all kinds of weird stuff. And I just then had to point out example after example after example of scholars and theologians who quote Pope Benedict the 14th and that particular work prior to his elevation to the papacy as Pope Benedict the 14th in other words showing him that this is very common it's well established 
this is just something that's idiosyncratic to Peter Kwasniewski. And it's not idiosyncratic to me. His response at that point, instead of just admitting he was wrong and just came out with this really rash judgment, instead he just basically says, well, you know, everybody else is wrong. I'm right, everybody else is wrong. It was just a very odd thing because I noticed he wasn't engaging me on the magisterium. He was going after little tiny things that he wanted to nitpick, and even on those little petty things, he was wrong about them and would not admit that he was wrong. So I haven't had very good experiences with him. Um, and it seems that even you know since that point, it, it's become even worse. What I've noticed from um, Kwasniewski is he's really, really, you know, he's really radicalized. Let me show you a couple of screenshots here so you can just kind of have a reference what I'm referring to. Let's see. Should be able to see it now. Take a look at this. I do indeed accuse Pope Francis of being a formal heretic. Look at the language that he uses. In the sense that I assert that there is sufficient evidence to reach this conclusion publicly in such a way that he could be declared deposed by an imperfect counselor or by the College of Cardinals. Now, I've spoken about this issue at length. K. Jatan and John of St. Thomas's view. So I'm not going to get into that here. But notice the language he's using. He's publicly accusing Pope Francis of being a formal heretic in the sense that he's in el he is eligible to be declared one that's not the proper use of the term anyway but that's a pretty major accusation to accuse a reigning pope of formal heresy so i'm not really surprised when he accuses faithful catholics of being you know brain uh having a brain disease He's already said way worse about the Pope. Over here, he calls him a flagrant liar. The person who wrote the recent article attacking the TLM is a flagrant liar, as was Francis in his letter accompanying Traditionis Custodis, and should be called to account for it. His hatred for Pope Francis is incredible. But these are just two examples. There's many, many others. But this is a person who is a Catholic philosopher who enjoys the privilege of identifying himself as a Catholic by going around and giving talks in parishes and elsewhere while attacking the Catholic Church, again, under the guise of being a Catholic philosopher even though i know he's presented often as a liturgical scholar but uh don't believe he has any credentials there so uh, his expertise is in philosophy uh that doesn't mean however he can't be competent and have some competency however in liturgical studies but i do want to point out he's usually invited to speak on questions of the liturgy all right so I want to now review his comments here. Let's see. Oh, before we do those, I have a couple more quotes here for you, and just so you can get a little bit more flavor of Kwasniewski and what we're dealing with here. Here's what he says about the Novus Ordo, and not the Novus Ordo, like liturgical abuse Novus Ordo. No, the Novus Ordo itself, properly celebrated at its best. Just to give you a little flavor, quote, the Novus Ordo, even at its best, is still a starvation diet compared with the riches in the preconciliar liturgical tradition. God can sanctify prisoners in jail fed on state crusts and standing water, but this is not the manner in which he would sanctify most of us. He quotes Jesus, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly says our Lord, and this applies also to liturgical life. So basically, if you're a Catholic, you're a faithful Catholic, you go to the Novus Ordo, a good one, you're a prisoner. 
in jail, being fed crusts, standing water. <laughs> Look, I totally get criticizing liturgical abuses in the Novus Ordo. I'm, I'm right there with anybody who would do that. But to say that the Novus Ordo properly celebrated, even at its best, like think of St. John Cantius, Novus Ordo, even at its best. He wants to say that's akin to being a prisoner in jail. So the magisterium, the church, the teaching authority of the church, who has authority over liturgical disciplines, they're just keeping us in jail right now. We're prisoners to the Vatican. They're just, you know, feeding us crust, standing water. Yeah. He says this elsewhere, quote, What happens if you take a lot of garbage, give it to the Pope, and he signs off on it? Does it cease to be garbage? Or does it just become papally approved and enforced garbage? <laughs> In other words... For him, the Novus Ordo, again, properly done at its best, is garbage, and it's just papally approved garbage. What Once again, this is a person who travels around in parishes, reaping the benefit of being a Catholic philosopher, and yet trashes the Catholic Church. All right. So, he accuses me uh, of being a hyperpapalist. What exactly is hyperpapalism? I'll show the screenshots in a moment, but let's define our terms because he doesn't do so in the post. Here's what hyperpapalism is for Kwasniewski. Quote, It's a sort of excessive adherence to the person and policies of the Pope by which one simplistically takes everything he says as a definitive judgment, which means infallible, and everything he does as a praiseworthy example, wrapping the mantle of infallibility around all his teachings in the garment of impeccability around all his behavior, end quote. Now, <laughs> sure, you, you probably do have some hyperpapalists here and there, um, but to accuse me of being a hyperpapalist is hilarious, frankly. Um, it's also the very thing he accuses others of doing, and that is gaslighting. Gaslighting. I don't believe that everything the Pope teaches is definitive. I have lengthy videos talking about the non-definitive teachings of the Magisterium. My dissertation on the magisterium is on non-definitive teachings. Why am I writing a dissertation on non-definitive teachings if I don't believe that there are such things as non-definitive teachings? That's weird. That's odd, given that I've acknowledged them numerous times. Anybody who's paid attention to anything I've said would know that. But a person who doesn't really pay attention and uses a lot of rhetoric and gaslighting, they would call me a hyperpapalist, which he does. Everything the Pope does, according to Kwasniewski, the, the hyperpapalist thinks that everything the Pope does is praiseworthy. Example is is that my position? That's odd. I've criticized Pope Francis on multiple occasions. Wrapping the mantle around infallibility and impeccability all around his behavior. That's weird. I recall saying that some of his actions were scandalous. Huh. I, I guess I just don't know, you know, how to be consistent. I just believe that he's entirely impeccable, but then I'll also criticize some of his behaviors as scandalous. Hmm. It's that, or it's that Peter Kwasniewski is gaslighting us, one of the two. Um, all right, let me share the screen here so you can see what I'm referring to. Uh, okay, let's go with this one first. These were sent to me, by the way, because he blocked me. Uh, don't know exactly why, but he blocked me. And um, let's see. A well-known YouTube personality 
thinks that he can refute traditionalists by simply asserting that the traditional Latin Mass, yes, that indeed is what it may and should be called, and the Novus Ordo, or Mass of Paul VI, are both the Roman Rite. So he's upset that I take that position, which is the position of Benedict XVI, by the way, in Sumorum Pontificum, where he explicitly says that. Not to mention it's the position of the magisterium for whatever that's worth, which means it's worth absolutely nothing to Peter Kwasniewski because he has no problem uh, dissenting from the magisterium. He says, um, mm, or um, ever heard of begging the question? I didn't beg the question. I produced evidence in a very lengthy video, which he did not engage, but okay. Ever heard of doing some homework, a deep dive, research, getting into the weeds? No, Kwasniewski, I've never heard of that. I'm not actually known for doing that. I never do deep dives. I'm just incredibly shallow in my theological thinking. And he goes on to list a whole bunch of people who should be able to teach me. And he even cites himself in the third person. Heck, maybe even Kwasniewski. I, I love that he refers to himself as, you know, in the third person here. They might be able to teach you a bit about the history and theology of the Roman Rite. Well, I don't know. Some of them block me and won't come on my show when I ask them to come on and have a discussion with me or respond to some of my uh, responses to their work. For some reason, they won't do that. I don't know. But you'll notice all non-authoritative figures as opposed to authoritative magisterial figures that I cite. Interesting. Uh, maybe we're starting to get a good indication as to why he doesn't engage my content on the magisterium. But it gets worse. Somebody uh, sent the next part to me. <clears throat> to think of the numbers of Catholics who are being fed this hyper papalist garbage right now. So here he calls me a hyper papalist. When the Pope and Papal Court are at an all-time low in doctrinal purity, liturgical continuity, moral rectitude, and overall credibility, it's frankly baffling and infuriating. I seem to really get under his skin. He becomes incredibly emotional any time he says something about me. It's a form of psychological abuse. So I'm psychologically abusing people and a willful participation in gaslighting. Again, the irony is to call me a hyper-papalist is gaslighting. That's the irony here. Um, and it's once again noteworthy. He does not directly engage any of my content on the magisterium. He just simply goes for ad hominems, straw mans, gaslighting, Ah, he's just a hyper papalist. But it gets worse. Here's what he says in the comment section. This is what I'm realizing more and more. Oh, okay, this is interesting. What it, what are you realizing more and more? Hyper papalism is a brain disease that obstructs any fruitful engagement with whatever is outside the arbitrary permitted boundaries. Fruitful engagements like the ones you refuse to have those fruitful engagements huh that's weird but it's a brain disease so look if you disagree with peter kwasniewski you don't want to be a dissenter you don't want to push against the pope by calling him a formal heretic you actually think that the church has the authority to modify the liturgy in the way that it has and that the Novus Ordo is still part of the Roman Rite. Oh, you know what? You're just a hyper papalist and you have a brain disease. Somebody commented in the comment section earlier and said, I've been wondering why my brain has been hurting lately. I guess it's because I have a brain disease. <laughs> well, I've had a headache lately too, sir. So yeah, I guess I do. I guess I am a hyper papalist. I have a my my brain has been hurting lately. I've I've been having these headaches. I wonder why. <laughs> it's a brain disease. 
So all you faithful Catholics out there, no rhetoric here. We're not gaslighting you. We're not insulting you. We're not engaging in ad hominems. You just have a brain disease. It's a form of misology or hatred of reason. Oh, boy. So, again, if you disagree with Wozniewski, you hate reason. <laughs> but, again, there's no gaslighting going on here. None. Zero. <laughs> All just convincing arguments from Kwasniewski. I what do you really say? Um obviously I'm not a hyper papalist. Here's where Kwasniewski behaves like liberals. You know how liberals will take language and weaponize it instead of calling murder murder, they will call murder pro choice, right? I mean, who wants to be against freedom and choice, right? So they put it in those terms. What he does here is he puts everything in terms of papal infallibility. And I'm not putting them in those terms. I'm not putting the question of, you know, are the liturgical um, revisions uh, promulgated by the magisterium, are these questions of papal infallibility? I don't put them in that category. I have a much more qualified and nuanced and much more well-researched position than that, despite what Kwasniewski says. Um, I don't put it in terms of papal infallibility. It's in terms of the authentic magisterium. And that's what's a huge gap in Kwasniewski. He plays this language game. He, he shifts the discussion to, some, to a place to where it's not at. Just like it's not a question of being pro-choice, right? We're all in favor of choices and people's freedom. What we're not in favor of is abusing choices to murder somebody and take away their choice to life, <laughs> right? So that, that's what they do on the left. And unfortunately, that's what I see Kwasniewski doing is he weaponizes language by shifting categories to where it doesn't belong and put, puts that on his interlocutors and the people that he is trying to oppose. He puts that position on them, puts them in that category, even though that's not their position. So once again, it's not my position that this is a question of papal infallibility. I'm not a hyper-papalist. I don't think that everything the Pope does is infallible. The question is, is this part of his authentic magisterium and requires religious submission of intellect and will on matters of faith and morals? And then questions of liturgical discipline. Is there a charism of safety attached to them? Those are the questions, not papal infallibility. But unfortunately, we can never have that discussion because Kwasniewski refuses to have discussions with people while gaslighting people on Facebook about how he can teach people, referring to himself in the third person, and how he just wants to have fruitful engagements, but everybody's just unwilling to have a fruitful engagement. Is it a brain disease? Um, <laughs> you know what? If, if being faithful to the magisterium is a brain disease, I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, I think it's incredibly dishonest and incredibly problematic to identify oneself as a Catholic, to benefit from the Catholic Church in speaking circuits, in book publications, being presented as a Catholic, while fighting against the Catholic magisterium. I think that's dishonest. Um, and if the opposite of that is having a brain disease, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'd rather be a faithful Catholic than somebody who profits off of the Catholic Church while abusing it uh, with content against the magisterium. Do I believe that we can criticize the magisterium? Absolutely. Absolutely. Do I think that there are some things about the magisterium that are reformable? Absolutely. That's not really what is in scope when it comes to this discussion, however. But like I said, unfortunately, we can't ever really get to that point because some people don't want to have discussions. So I'll just continue to address this stuff on video here on my own channel and respond to it accordingly. All right. I hope this has been helpful. All right, make sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button. Share this on your social media. And of course, check me out, patreon.com.
forward slash reason and theology if you want to get access to extra content and support what I'm doing here. See y'all later. Have a great Sunday. Oh, wait, before you go, I would really appreciate it if you would consider supporting this channel. This is my primary means to provide for my family, and it also helps me to produce content like this video. If you would like to support me, become a patron by visiting patreon.com forward slash reason and theology. You'll also get access to extra exclusive content when you become a patron. Lastly, hit that like button and the subscribe button, and be sure to leave a comment down below. God bless. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, office, or any kind of property anywhere in the world, you're going to want to call Real Estate for Life, and they're going to connect you with a Catholic agent. Now, that agent will donate a portion of their commission upon sale, and Real Estate for Life will donate 75% of that gift to a pro-life organization at no cost to you. Call Real Estate for Life at 1-877-LIFE-US1 or text them 248-431-1440. If you care about the pro-life cause, call them now. Is it possible that ancient aliens created other ancient aliens? Ancient alien theorists say yes. But then, is it also possible that ancient aliens created the ancient alien theorists? And are the ancient aliens and ancient alien theorists led by the Vatican headed by the Pope, ancient alien theorists and certain unnamed Catholic YouTubers say yes. Tired of Catholic shows that peddle conspiracy theories that sound like something out of an ancient aliens episode? Check out Reason and Theology for a more reasonable take.